Hi, this is Chris, and I want to talk to you about when ladybugs and some beneficials are simply just not appropriate and a complete waste of your money, despite the uh, claims of all of those in the natural pest control business. And that is particularly true when growing tight row crop plants. This year I've planted a very large vegetable garden. I've probably got about 60 different varieties of uh, plants from uh, beans to arugula, to tomatoes, chilies, I mean, you name it, lettuce, radishes. I mean, I'm going to make a very huge garden this year to use as a um, kind of a research project, an educational project for people. Uh, one of the plants that get completely infested with aphids are the brassica plants, cauliflower, cabbage. These plants, we have a little ladybug preying on some aphids right here, but these plants get aphids in places where beneficials simply are just not able to effectively control them and have a severe amount of damage on the plants as a result. That is down here deep in the uh, heart of the plant aphids begin building up very deep down here at the base of stems and then down in this new growth by the time this growth is at the stage right there where it's just about the size of your pinky it already has aphids all over it if it doesn't, you're probably not watering or fertilizing it enough. Really, aphids are just a sign of your success. You can't have a healthy garden and not have aphids. And they're just telling you that you're watering and fertilizing really well. Sometimes maybe too well, too much. But aphids come with good plant growth. And down here, you have aphids developing and these plant stems. This is a case where a mixture of insecticidal soap and neem is highly effective. Neem severely irritates the pests and then they die in the soap. And that is not neem oil. I'll have, there's two different types of neem. I'll have to go and look. We used to grow hundreds of acres of baby's breath and we used neem, safer soap, and orthene. Yeah, it's not very organic, but you're growing baby's breath. Customers don't want to know if it's organic. They just want to see it's perfect in shape. So, one of the other problems with these types of plants is they have a very waxy surface on them. You can rub my finger on there and remove a little bit of that. So a lot of the beneficials literally just slide right off these plants. Even if you were to dump a whole bunch of ladybugs in here, it'd be a complete waste of money. You could try lacewing larvae, but even then, they're simply just not going to get deep enough into the heart of these plants to keep them pest free. They are a great substitute if the weather is appropriate, if you don't want to use the insecticidal soap neem combinations or them by themselves. And you can see. Despite their appetite for aphids, lady beetles typically wander around quite a bit and look for a cluster of food, eat it, move on. Lady beetles are highly effective in uh, you know, chilies, tomatoes, other vegetable plants when they're available. And that is also another issue. The state of California has banned ladybug harvesting, so this year. I was set to have a big ladybug harvest and I didn't. There are ladybugs for sale right now, but they're all harvested illegally and are being sold against the wishes of the Department of Fish and Wildlife. What they're going to do about it, I don't know. Uh, but I'm sure that they're going to be doing something soon. So I decided I was not going to involve myself in the illegal ladybug harvest. Green lacewing, definitely a good uh, idea, especially for when it's warmer. And here's a, again a good example of when not to be using ladybugs for aphid control.